What is an odd behavior of yours you think only you do? I hold my breath when someone walks by in a confined space, because I don't want to breath their essence in. IDK. I rub my feet together in a circular motion, when I'm in bed, and getting ready to sleep, my boyfriend calls it cricketing. I've got this weird habit, when I return home, I walk into my room, right past the spot I put my wallet and keys, then go to the bathroom with the door closed, when I come back out, I put my wallet slash keys, where they go, why do I bring them in with me, just in case the bathroom gets, sent back in time. It would be useful to have some of that stuff. No, I don't expect this will ever be a necessary precaution point, but since I waste no time doing it. My dog and I have arguments. When he barks, he will hear someone in a hallway outside and start barking every time. I tell him SHHHH and he barks again slightly less loudly this time. This continues until I can barely hear him, but he has to get the last word in drives me up the wall. I do the same with my cat. We have full on conversations and arguments. My hands being wet makes me angry. I'm not a confrontational slash aggressive person, but if my hands were wet and someone came at me, I'd be probably 4x more likely to be aggressive back at them. I talk to my food like him torturing it while I cook it. Yes I live alone. Crappy German accent while making a omelet. There are the mushrooms point not speaking. Perhaps I shall point increase the heat. I would 100% watch your cooking show. When a page is taking a long time to load on my laptop I rotate my index finger clockwise and it makes me feel like it makes the page load faster. There was an article here a few months ago about how moving your mouse back and forth actually made things go faster in old versions of Windows. I have a habit that somewhat resembles what autistic people do when they are overstimulated, when I'm alone at home and something positive happens, get some good news, get invited somewhere funny tc, I slap my head, almost like I'm playing the bongos, it happens a lot and actually feels really good, like I'm getting a serotonin rush, in grade 4, I met one other person who did it, she called it the woodges which I still think is amazing, I think chimpanzees do this. I have noticed I often sniff when I enter a room, so I don't scare people by just talking out of nowhere. Your friends probably think you've got a crippling coke habit. Plot twist, that's the actual reason. I scoot my shoes on the ground, so it makes noise. I'm always scaring people when they can't see me. I get weird compulsions that I need to touch between my pinky fingers or touch my armpit. It's more like a tickling sensation that builds until I have to relieve it by touching it. I have no idea what causes this and I haven't heard of anyone else that has to do this. Maybe some form of mild OCD. I knew a girl with Tourette's that described this, but instead of touching to relieve the sensation she had to hit it, she was just constantly hitting herself. When I wake up for work. Sometimes I have the good chills about certain things, like the account console in my car might look like a cockpit, and it sends good chills down my spine. It's like the time before I have to be at work is a cozy little mini time. There is no way in hell I can explain this in words. I have always called it the morning weird. Man I hope there is someone else out there that knows what I'm talking about. Yep, I get them, usually as I get my day going, and especially if there's something cozy about my drive-in to work that strikes me like when I get a really good podcast and I have my coffee and suddenly I take it all in and it's like a tiny little joygasm that gives me a shivery boost every time I bend over to pick something up I pretend I just unknowingly dodged a bullet from some far away sniper trying to take me out sometimes I shoot fingers guns for no reason stop dodging in the shower I slowly rotate to keep myself evenly warm I do it unconsciously now like a rotisserie chicken. According to this highly unscientific poll, 6% of people do this. Does this same number correlate with how you sleep? I fall asleep on my back and constantly rotate like a sausage. Sometimes I wonder if there's actually people who can see into your mind. So I start thinking about really interesting things so if there is, they won't think I'm boring. I scream as loud as I can, mentally, and think of really effed up sh if they look uncomfortable after that. I then know that they can. I'll sometimes do the Homer Simpson bit. I know you can read my thoughts boy. Meow 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 meow. And if there's no reaction I feel safer haha. 
Sometimes when I'm listening to music I play a game where I tap my fingers to the syllables. If the sentence ends at the pinky or the thumb I win. If not I must continue until it ends up at one of them. I also do this, but completely randomly using random words. It doesn't have to be a song. If there are tiles on the floor or some other weird design squares, lines, paintings etc. I always try to walk in some weird mathematically even pattern. It's very difficult to explain, but in my mind it makes a lot of sense. I make sure to make a splash noise when I pee to make sure I'm not sleeping and pissing the bed. Has it ever saved your bed from smelling like pee? Whenever someone coughs I have the urge to cough as well. Imagine just being at a school assemblies, and when you cough you just started a giant earthquake of coughs. It kinda weird, but I like to rub my feet against each other under the covers. It calms me down, and helps me fall asleep. I do this, but unconsciously. There it is. I knew if I dug long enough I would find my weird. It's nice and snuggly and relaxing. When I'm at home I eat the kernely bits of the popcorn first, and save the soft parts for the end. I don't know where this came from, but I can't seem to stop. I say things to myself to break a train on thought, like I love you, or I'm sorry, or you got this, just to keep myself going on the right path. Probably be weird, if someone walked in on me trying to motivate myself out loud. Positive affirmations, good work, it's important to be nice to yourself can say in all honesty, I adopted the monk touch monk the old TV series about the unique detective, whereby I'll touch every pole, or stop sign I pass, even if just for a second, don't know when it started, but it's become almost subconscious autonomy at this point over many years and odd looks, as to why, I have no idea, something about touching something physical that's permanent, and serving a purpose I guess, well guess I'm not so odd after all. D hello fellow tappers, I do this when I'm drunk. My dad drilled into me from a very young age that when you're on a boat you should always have three points of contact with whatever environment you're moving on, so both feet and at least one hand. Now that kicks in, whenever I feel unstable, including when I've had one too many drinks, makes me look like I'm low-key trying to tarzan my way across the living room. Shake my butt when I'm lying in bed. Hey you should meet my roommate. I wake up every morning to him just fast asleep, but vigorously shaking his butt. My boyfriend clenches and unclenches his, but whilst he sleeps, so he shakes the bed. Oh there are more of us. Using random number generator apps to dictate how I set my daily to-do lists. When I can't decide between two things I assign the random numbers, like 68 and 14 or call them left and right, and have someone pick one over the other. Whatever they choose I go for that thing. When I'm alone I use an RNG or coin instead. So not exactly, but same idea I suppose. I also do this, but if I find myself disappointed in the outcome, then I do the opposite. It's more like uncovering my true desire than truly randomizing. Talking to myself in gibberish, when I'm doing something, as though I were explaining what I'm doing. I imagined a guy doing the dishes, and talking like someone from The Sims. Laughed my A off. Sal S U L. I tap my top and bottom teeth side, to side to make rhythms, but both sides have to be evenly tapped. And, when I think of, or hear, a particular word, I'll rearrange the letters, so they go consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, etc. And add letters in, when they don't fit the pattern. Double letters get scratched, so say the word pattern, it becomes pairing, because it's following the rule, and removing doubles. Sometimes I'll stretch it out, to incorporate every vowel and Y, so in that case, pattern would become pairing accusally, no reason why, but I do it constantly, and haven't been able to switch, if off for 15 years or more, it took me a very long time, to realize what I was doing, and even longer to be able to put it into words. When at the library or bookstore, I sometime open a book I know I will read at some point, but not right now, and read a random line at a random page. Then, maybe years later I will read the book, and when I get to that line, that I have forgotten all about, and get the most powerful feeling of deja vu, I will remember what the world felt like, smelt like, the sensations and feelings I had, while reading that line. It's like like little gifts of memories to future me floating around in various books. That's beautiful. As someone who gets a lot of deja vu, I want to try this. 
Sometimes when I get bored, I explain modern things to Benjamin Franklin, music I listen to, or how my phone works, etc. Sometimes I go even further back and explain it to Socrates or a caveman. Sometimes it's philosophical, sometimes it's just stupid. I don't know why I do it, but it's very entertaining. I used to do something like that on car trips, only I'd pick a time period and imagine what a philosopher, monk or otherwise educated person from that era would be able to figure out about what I was seeing. I rub the tip of my nose and after a while it starts to feel really nice and I get a mild sensation, not unlike an orgasm. So now I've been rubbing my nose for longer than I'd like to admit. My first time visiting a sex toy shop, they had a little table where you could bring a toy you wanted to try. The employee would put batteries in it and have you try the settings against your nose. Apparently if it's too strong for your nose, it's too strong for your genitals. Yeah. But how do you fit it in your nostrils in the first place? Okay. So this is actually the most hilarious answer so far. Yeah. And I also wonder how many people have just tried this themselves. Besides me, of course. My alarm is set to 7am. I can't remember when I last heard it go off. Because I wake up at around 6.15 and spend some time on my phone before unsetting my alarm and getting in the shower before 7am. My alarm is set to 7am. I can't remember when I last heard it go off because I wake up at around 7.30 in the afternoon. How does this feel to have your life so together? Well, I do have a bowl in my living room filled with lemons and limes. Sometimes I spell a word in my head over and over until it seems like nonsense. It's called semantic satiation. Well holy shtill. I do this with seat belt a lot. Seat belt. Seat belt. Seat. Belt. Belt. Seat belt. I'm mocked often. Each day when I come home from work, I say to my cat Bruce Wayne. Hi, honey, I'm home, did you do your taxes, or what you did your taxes, in my head, if my cat were a person he'd be a tax accountant or something, every time I leave the house I remind my dog, to pay whatever bill is due next, my cat would be a Victorian street urchin, if he were a person, that's a foin laptop you've got air, gov, real warm like, mind if I sit myself down, knew you wouldn't object, a true gentleman you are. When I leave the house I tell my cat to make good life choices. For the record, he does not. Also, I love the fact that your cat is named Bruce Wayne, and yet you think he'd be an accountant. When I'm watching a movie or TV series and something bad happens to a character I really like I can't handle him being sad or distraught, so I stop watching it. It's a real problem I have to force myself to continue, because if I wouldn't I wouldn't watch anything until the end. It's been like this since I was a kid. Oh yeah I get this real bad. I will fast forward through parts, read wiki summaries, so I can satisfy my curiosity, or just stop watching. I blow on my ice cream to cool it off. I'm not really sure. I wasn't even aware I was doing something weird until my GF noticed and said, you know that's not hot right. By doing this, you're warming it up. Brain, I got this food very temperature i'll learn from soup i make weird noises and gestures when i think no one else is home do you also check if there are no webcam after a while when it's too weird in my own home with my wife never having mentioned wanting one ever yes i still go if someone's watching aren't they i walk fast when it's a crowded place i use hand gestures whenever another person gets in my way to tell them where i will go like i point to the left and they automatically move to the right without any awkwardness it works more often than i expected people tend to follow such unexpected gestures unconsciously fellow fast walker when i walk down a crowded street i pretend as though i'm returning a kick in american football scanning ahead for creases sidestepping into space using people walking ahead of me to set up blocks i might need to start adding touchdown celebrations at the end of the street growing up in new york city i used to pretend i was luke skywalker on a speeder bike and i'd sidestep and juke down a crowded sidewalk pretending it was the forest moon of ender while walking to school almost every morning this old guy sitting on a stoop once called me walter payton and i asked if he was a gd humans need blinker lights hopefully they add in v2 a nobody would use them seems rather efficient tbh i do the same 
realized it's super effective after years of restaurant work. Also, I'm not checking out your A, I'm looking at your hips, because that's the first thing to move when you're changing direction. I give objects a chizak or I scratch it for them, because they look itchy, I like that. I hear noises in multiples of 8, not that I hear any sound 8 times, but if there's a noise that repeats a bunch of times, I hear it in my head again and count it, using 8s, are you a musician? Being stuck in 4 over 4 times so often, it would make sense, wow, you guys, I never thought of it as being 4 over 4 time, but it probably is, now I feel dumb. Lol, I did use to write music, and I have years of piano and voice training, so yeah, huh. I make a valley out of pillows and blankets and sleep in the middle, so I can koala hug something, while laying on either side, I call it building a nest, but say my dear, it's the most amazing way to sleep, I miss my nest, when I travel, I need a heavy pillow at the foot of my bed every time I travel, to simulate the 15 pound cat that's usually there. Habit that I've had since childhood, I play with my ears, especially when they're cold, I fold them, and scrunch them, and can fit them into the ear canal until they unfold, and pop back into form. Finally one that I can relate to. I'll occasionally read sections of a book where nothing much happens, but the characters are just chilling, it's almost like visiting friends. One of my favorite parts in all of the Harry Potter series is when Harry gets two weeks alone in Diagon Alley in Prisoner. Nothing happens. Just wish I could experience that myself. That's my major complaint about especially the later books. I just love the wizarding world and want to have more slice of life in it. Just descriptions of the shops, the classes and breaks at Hogwarts, the interactions between full family wizards and muggleborns etc. In the later books it's all just drama and I just want peace. I tap every time a dashed line goes past the car. It's like a perpetual game of Guitar Hero. Yeah but do you use the invisible saw extending from your finger to cut down telephone poles when you're in the passenger seat? Mine's a laser beam. I do the same thing. I always thought it was a Tourette's thing, but either it's not, or all you guys should see a neurologist. I've been playing an infinite scroll version of Super Mario Bros. in my head whenever I'm a passenger in a car or train. Since 1986, I have Mario jumping over or on top of all the obstacles that I pass. Sometimes at stoplights I have Mario hop from car to car, when the line of cars is flowing in front of me even as a driver. I don't think I've ever told this to anyone. No way. So do I. I throw up gang signs at my dog. Don't know why it started, but I get a laugh out of it, and my dog just likes the attention. I do weird things in front of my dog to make him curious, and I like the way he looks at me with those big googly eyes full of confusion. The head tilt thing they do is the best. I sing with my cat, and he responds when I pause. Somebody once told me the world is gonna meow. I ain't the sharpest tool in the meow. I find it hilarious he also likes the attention. This is delightful. I like it when people sing to their cats. I make up songs about and sing them for my cat. Cutie Marputi is one of my favorites. Although he's a cat, so he couldn't care less. I sing Irish songs to my ginger cat and rap easy -E to my black cat so luckily they can't conceptualize casual racism or they'd be even more indifferent to me. In my head I make a plan to rob any business I enter. I make note of security, cameras, employees. I think about what part of town I'm in and try to estimate what the police response time would be and possible escape routes and so on. I'd never do it of course. It's just a mental exercise. I made the mistake of telling my wife about it and now when we go out she notices and tracks my eyes and says stop that. You're so weird. Lol. I'm gonna steal this one. Have a plan first. If I accidentally hit my head or something, when I was little I'd pretend to be knocked out for at least 10 minutes on the floor, and then slowly get up, when I'd realize nobody was going to indulge my dramatic A, eh? drama queen, show me the money. After I stopped chewing on my nails I needed a new thing for when I'm nervous, preferably something discreet. So I started pressing my nails into the side of my knuckles, and then kind of pressing the hurting spot. Somehow this pain feels extremely relaxing for me. Also it helps me think, when I can't concentrate, I've moved to biting the skin around my fingers. It's kind of the same thing. It hurts but like a good hurt. 
that turned into full-blown dermatophagia for me. Every knuckle and the skin doing down my index finger were completely torn apart. My hands looked horrifying. Thankfully a few years back I forced myself to stop and heal. Constantly. Realistically I do this hourly. Relive specific moments from my past. I can imagine a conversation that I had 8 years ago and react physically in the present by saying the words I would have said then or move my body in the same way as I do in the memory. I have to blink an even number of times and most of the time that's not enough. I have to stop what I'm doing to keep on blinking until my mind is pleased with the right amount of even times I've blinked. Sounds like hell. There are times I wanna freak the f out because I just wanna stop but never do. This sounds like OCD. Done this as a kid and it was very hard to get rid of that habit. Swallowing an even number of times. Stepping an even number of times. Chewing an even number of times. Realized I must have had unresolved anxiety slash OCD as a kid. Fought with myself one day to break the habit. And was successful thankfully. Guess it was my way of trying to have some control over my life. Growing up poor sucks. When doing something I don't do often. Or for the first time I tend to explain it. As if I'm making a guide for others. I find it a nice way. To catch a mistake. Before it happens. Just before I'm about to write. Sometimes I'll do this little circle thing in the air above the paper, like I'm revving the pen up, before I use it, I'm here to say, F yeah I'm not the only one, same dude. You first, I count the toilet paper squares, ensuring there's exactly 4 or 8, before I tear it off to wipe, I usually tear 3, I guess this means we are enemies now. I spin in circles, and think about things, but like, as an activity, I've spent an hour plus just spinning and thinking about things, that don't matter on multiple occasions. You will never find on my alarm clock time like 6.40 or 7.15, it will always be something like 6.38 or 7.14, I don't know why, same for me haha, I think the 7.13 feels better than the 7.15, because when the alarm goes off I have a reason to lay down a little longer, because I'll tell myself 7.15 I must get out. In elementary school, they explained to us what right angles were, and asked us to find some around the room. Fast FWD to 23 years later, I still do that all the time I'll look for parallel lines and right angles in the axis of different shapes, and when I'm sitting somewhere, I look for ways to tilt, or turn my head, so that things seem symmetrical and form right angles from my point of view. Sometimes I take a huge intake of breath, as if I've been stuck underwater for longer than I'm comfortable, and can finally breathe again. It scares the crap out of my friends as I'm usually quiet for several minutes, and then suddenly I'm practically screaming. I just tell people that I forgot to breathe. I rarely realize I've done it too. It just happens. I also randomly do one hiccup. Sometimes mid-sentence and I'll continue my statement without letting the hiccup distract me. I also do the breath thing. Makes me feel alive. When I'm extra sleepy and laying in bed, I'll just raise one of my arms completely straight up and let my hand go limp. I'll hold this position for a while and I usually go to sleep soon after ha ha ha. When reading a book I sometimes stop paying attention, but I keep reading. My eyes continue reading without me realizing what's going on. Sometimes I have to reread entire chapters because I forgot to pay attention. I have conversations with myself out loud and I stare intently at one spot when I'm thinking. I also talk with inanimate objects and I catch myself cocking my head to the side like a dog when I'm confused. Of note, they don't talk back to me. I just have one-sided conversations with the objects. Kind of like how Archer talks to Creature in Creature's first few appearances. Before they found a voice actor for him, I have conversations with myself out loud. A boss once told me this is the sign of a healthy mind. I do it a lot and always assume the opposite. I pretend I'm giving birth, breathing, while I poop. Especially if slightly constipated, because I convince myself, if it helps push a baby out then it should for poops, I'm male. I have hyperhidrosis, fancy word for sweating a lot, and my t-shirts are constantly sticking to my armpits, to you and stick them. I just lift my elbows up and down a time or three. Basically, I flap my arms like a chicken, most of the time, 
I don't even realize I'm doing it. Imagine having a conversation with someone you have never met, and they randomly start flapping like a chicken out of the blue and act like nothing just happened with no explanation. MF and dying at this image. I love it. It's poultry in motion. Have you tried sticking sanitary pads to the armpits to absorb the sweat? I've seen this advice posted before, and I have to wonder, does anyone actually do this on the regular? It seems incredibly uncomfortable, plus it'd make diaper sounds when you move your arms. I spank everything, got a package, spank it, empty table, spank that sh steering wheel of my car, like love taps, notebook, spanked, bag of rice, oh yes it spanked that, there isn't an object I haven't tapped, spanked, or touched, I also think out loud. When my girlfriend gets home, I often pretend to be dead, she then feigns shock and horror, until I ultimately succumb to a fit of laughter, I try and be as inventive as possible with positioning and stuff, and I'm well aware, that I could become the man who cried wolf one day, just mix it up with other pranks. True moral of that story is, that you should never tell the same lie twice. After all, tell me, Garrick, are you really just a simple tailor, or is that another one of your lies? When I listen to music I always imagine myself performing it live for a crowd. Sometimes I'll listen to songs on repeat, until I've envisioned every part of my imaginary performance. Sometimes I'm just singing, other times I'm playing like guitar or keyboard as well. Note that I have no actual musical experience whatsoever. Every time I shift into neutral, I wiggle the stick back and forth a bit as a sanity check. I thought it was normal for standard drivers to do that. That's good a good habit, to ensure you're not accidentally in gear and it's a good fidgety thing. To do at lights, I used to check that I was in first gear about 3 times before the traffic light would turn green. I throat sing in the car, that way if anyone hears me it just sounds like car noises. I imagine myself doing absolutely stupid things at work, as a way to curb my boredom. I like to do certain things in a certain time, so I make a deal with the devil that, if I don't complete my work in that time, I may lose my life mercilessly like getting cut into thousand pieces, or getting crushed from toe to head, etc. I usually complete the task in time, but if I fail, and the devil comes to take my life, I trick the devil, my mind, to make another deal with more severe consequences. I usually do it in simple tasks like, if I don't reach that tree in 10 seconds then I'm dead, or if I don't cross that car, and maintain a distance of 1 meter in 10 seconds then I will be in an accident in less than 30 seconds. I know it's foolish, and I doubt anyone else is as crazy as me. When I'm alone sometimes I will shriek, and beg for my life under my breath, as if I'm being murdered, in order to give myself a cheap chuckle. So I'll be in the bathroom going no god, don't let this happen, don't let this happen. He's stabbing me, I don't want to die, our father who art in heaven, and just laugh my a off. Guardian angels of reddit, what's the most annoying thing someone you are responsible for does on a regular basis? Yeah, alright, that's pretty odd. Uh, and we have a winner, an hour later and still no me too, replies. See how far ahead I can walk with my eyes closed, before I get freaked out, and have to open them.